um, yeah, I, I sort of, I, I, I wonder that. But, but there are low rise cities that are very efficient. Yeah. I, I think of yeah. European cities like the Dutch cities mm. are not tall uh, mm. to speak of. They have great transportation, mm. people, bicycle. Berlin is a low <coughs> city, which is a great livable city that's efficient. And, I mean, I'm, I've only been in New Zealand for a short time, but those, those little bungalows and the little lots of land are really beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. it's a lovely thing. And, and, and the and the coastline, the waterfront is really beautiful here. And, and I, I think it, it's a mistake to try to posit the question of how do we change that? But I think the question should be how do we keep that beautiful tradition and how do we build on it yeah, to make yeah. something that's really much better yeah, going yeah, forward. Yeah. So I, think because, I, I agree. Because nobody's, nobody's going to make not, that choice. Yeah. But I yeah. think the problem is we've got two models, haven't we? We've got a sprawl model, the yeah. Owen McShane one, which is basically let's just, let's just yeah. keep on going. And uh, you know the we're going to build the infrastructure, the motorways. Well, someone's going to build it for us, mm. and then we'll just we'll but, have these houses, and then you, all the other models it's, it's compact. A, it's a know. city of 165 yeah. neighborhoods. I, somebody said, yeah. Yeah. and and New York is a city of neighborhoods. Most cities are city of neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can if you can actually think of it as neighborhoods and see how you strengthen the neighborhoods mm. in these nodal centers, that's probably a pretty good model for a future city. It doesn't mm. have to be. A central city to be efficient, yeah. I don't think. But we have problems. I mean, one of the problems is we've we've found we're finding is we want to densify those those villages mm. that we've got NIMBY, you know, the whole NIMBY thing, you know. And so uh, this is a classic case of St Helier's. You know, somebody wanted to build a four-storey apartment building, you know, very mo I mean, modest, really. Mm -hmm. But you know, the the protest, uh, yeah. you know, it was so. So I, I think that's the problem we've got in Auckland is we've got the sprawl model or we've got the densify model. Yeah, these extremes. And and yeah. where so yeah. where is this, so I think that's a challenge for us mm. is finding a model to put this 500,000 people who mm. are arriving in the next 20 years. Yeah. I mean, well, I, you know. before we explore that, because that's that's the great dichotomy, a great challenge we've got. <laughs> we're just going to hear a little bit from Richard about um, what sort of feedback we're getting online. Now, the fact that y you've been able to read the <laughs> tweets and haven't burst out laughing, well, I wouldn't take that personally if you did, and I can't <laughs> see them. Um, <laughs> maybe in different your forehead. That's right, right. It's a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Richard. OK, well, there's a couple of uh, uh, Twitters that might, uh, tweets that might uh, uh, ask questions about what Matthew's just said, and that is uh, uh, Zane Eggington says Auckland's a 21-year-old student full of potential but can never make up its mind. Um, Theo Gibson uh, writes, how does one compare a 3,000-year-old city with one that is 170 years old? I guess the question is, in the 21st century, do they face the same challenges? Um, and just one more comment, and that is really to our online audience, uh, uh, just to remind you that you can uh, Twitter using the hashtag UnitechFTF, uh, or email us with a written comment or question at UFTF11 at gmail.com with subject heading written, or thirdly, converse us via webcam using Skype uh, using the subject heading webcam. Uh, give us a quick abstract and we'll um, come back to you and include your Skype name. Thanks okay, very much well. indeed. That question about a 170 year old city versus a 3,000 year old city, different starting points but similar challenges, do you reckon? I think, I think um, if I can be challenging and controversial, I, I think that um, Auckland has a, a point of difference. I mean, I came here because I wanted to come here because I thought it was an amazing city. A lot of New Zealanders are, are heading to Australia because they believe a better life is there to be had. And I would like them to come back because I believe in Auckland and New Zealand as a, as a, as a place. I have yeah, been trying to do a bit of research about New Zealand and about its... It used to stand for something really amazing. Um, the Muraroa, the, the frigates, the frigate off to meet the French. And, you know, I, I want to know how relevant we are today. Uh, and I think that we need to be careful not to copy the rest of the world. You know, I can have strong views around my European roots, but I'm also African as well. Um, I think the beauty in New Zealand is its, it's, it's rich culture, uh, its smallness. It should be nimble, it should be able to transform its economy, it should be able to be resilient as a country. And I think it needs to be, because it's, it's, it doesn't appear on lots of the CNN maps alone. And I think it, it needs to be relevant in the modern world. And I think we could be the most amazing uh, country, but we need to understand what, 
what we want and what's, what's New Zealand, what's our version of cities. Because at the moment we're copying everybody else and we do it really badly. And, and I think you know, we should learn from the mistakes of other cities and think to ourselves, right, now how do we become self-sufficient as a nation or as a, as a city and do all the things that others weren't able to do. I mean, I'm a bit dreamy about that, but I really believe there's more to this place than, than meets the eye. And, uh, and we are a thousand years old if you're a Maori person. Right. You know, we're not just 170 years old. We're a, a very rich place that, 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 that hasn't yet blossomed, I think. So I would say a teenager that's spotty and, and is, has yet to grow up. And um, that's maybe our point of difference and our, our point of, uh, yeah, keep is young, it, keep young and youthful. Don't become old. Yeah. Is it unrealistic, unreasonable to, to um, think that there's a different way of doing that, which is this, which is not the dichotomy of sprawl versus density, but some other combination yeah. that reflects um, the extraordinary geography in the yeah. city. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm, uh, and um, the sheer breadth of its cultures. So for example, we are now the sixth most immigrant intensive city in the world over a million people. Right. Um, so there's an awful lot of people, there's a few around, this, around the table here who are immigrants. Um, and um, is, but is, is it possible to reconcile those, those two rather extreme views of cities um, in a different form? I mean, is that, a, is that or, or are they just so contradictory? I think, I think you can do that, um, but I think we've got to actually try to establish what our identity actually is. And, and I think I, I, w one thing that comes to mind as an analogy is how much I like a person who actually knows who they really are. They're comfortable in their skin. They, they're not trying to be something else or somebody else. Mm. Um, and they just get about doing something. There's a genuineness to them. And you know, we can, we, we're enamoured by that, whereas a person who, on the other hand, uh, basically doesn't know who they are, they flip from idea to idea or, or, or um, uh, you know, they, they dress differently one year to the next and they're always trying to search for an identity and try to work out who they are. They don't seem to be going anywhere and, and I think Auckland's been in that kind of place where we're trying to find our identity um, and um, we need to, I think we need to really actually try and decide what that is and then we actually, when we do decide what it is, not change it again two years later but actually decide this is it, this is who we are and um, get about building ourselves around that, actually getting some strength and some, some core to, the, um, to that identity. Um, yeah, and it, it's, yeah. a, it's, 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 a, it's a sense of that identity, it's not necessarily a, um, I, I don't know exactly how to picture it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I really agree with you, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, if I look at what New Zealand is, how they see themselves in some ways, and actually adver advertising agencies know this um, mm -hmm. more than perhaps, I mean, we do see ourselves as clean and green, I mean, we not, may not be. Um, I'd like to see ourselves as, thinking of ourselves as clever in terms of, or, or smart in terms of some of the, the industries that we have, rather than just sort of in a sense we continue on. Some of the high tech stuff that we're doing is, which I think really is really well suited to Auckland is, is out there. Um, compassionate. Uh, we are compassionate, I, I think. I mean, we don't often think about ourselves. I, I do um, think we're, we're independent. Some, you know, and you, you mentioned Muraroa. I mean, I, I, you know, I remember that years and years ago. Yeah. Um, but we do, and, and you notice even the ads come out on TV, it's about New Zealanders that sort of do something a little bit differently and we're all kind of proud of it. And, and then that brings that confidence in. I mean, that we are confident about, in a sense, who, in, in a sense who we are. So all those things, I think, are, are really about what New Zealand is. And New Zealanders think of how they, how would they would like to think of themselves, even if perhaps they don't come across that way. But I don't see that confidence being translated into our urban environments. Yeah. We think we're clean and green, but we don't, yeah, yeah. we don't use that as a planning tool. We think we're independent, but we try and, as you say, try and copy off each other. We are compassionate, but we'll leave you know, housing and you know, people living in, in caravans. Or There was a discussion today about <laughs> people, trailer parks. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I just could not believe that somebody was thinking that this was something that we should be aiming towards. Um, so I, I think we know, but it's, it's the translation part that I, I, I have, have the difficulty in kind of uh, my, sort of my, moving towards. My, um, and I, look, I, I, I don't have any research, but my, my sense is that Auckland was at one time, to, to talk of Auckland in particular, as opposed to the country at large, um, incredibly confident. In fact, perhaps somewhat overconfident. It was a mercantile city. It, it was built up on import licences, this is my um, sort of unformed economic view, but it seemed to me, um, a merchant town that essentially 
had a mercant it had a mercantile view. It did what was expedient, and it did it without really thinking too much. Quite brash, quite confident. And we just got to a point where people have have realised that that's not. Um, how they want to continue any longer. It's not the kind of city they want to have. I think Auckland has informed that view. And my sense is that, that Auckland is changing and that um, it's the time to capitalise on that. I think we need leadership that encourages Auckland to love itself again. And I think as long as everyone sits around griping <laughs> about Auckland and so on, it will never go anywhere. And that if you, it's like, like anything, if you don't believe in um, what you're doing and where you're going, then you, God, you sure as hell aren't going to convince anyone else. And I think the leadership that all of us, um, now that's not to say one should be naive and, and um, try to fool people, but I do think we have to take um, a kind of positive view on where the city's going. I mean, we're currently working on the Auckland plan, yeah, for yeah. goodness sake. We've reformed um, our, our council, governance yeah. structure. Surely it's an optimistic time for a city like this. I mean, I can't believe that um, we've done all this um, and we don't see it as being a time for, you know, for optimism. Um, am I wrong there? You know, because it's so easy um, to, you know, moan and gripe and... Auckland could never really glib. get to where it needs to get to mm. and, until this change. Mm. It was always going to be pulling itself apart and, mm. you know, this is the most exciting time in my life, yeah. working for a new mayor and a, a city that is, is on, on a trajectory now of, of a better place mm. and, you know, one mayor, one vision. You know, I could wish we had a five-year term, you know, this is, that's one of the problems here. It's sort of left, Hang right, left, there, right. <laughs> but at least should, and it should be just left. Huh? Well, whatever, whatever, whatever way, but at least you get some continuity and I think that's President why Auckland life. is just, uh, it's just poised yeah. to do amazing yeah. things and, and to really grapple with the things we've been trying to grapple with in, in an ad hoc way and it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we're working with you yeah. all here. It's a very exciting time. Yeah, yeah. Something special is going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's very interesting to see how um, the new governance structure of the city is working out, um, both in terms of the council and then the local boards. Yeah. But it's also been very interesting to see um, in, over the recent months how rapidly and thoughtfully the thinking has been moving on um, around the spatial plan issues, around the Auckland plan. And so when we get to see the draft on August the 25th yeah. for the first time, um, I think people will be quite surprised at how well that has developed since the first discussion paper was out. But underlying all that is, yes, people like you and, and other professionals, um, you on the staff and other people you work with, um, are engaged in this, but uh, do we think that the people of Auckland more widely have, um, have engaged, have, have you know, given voice to what their hopes are and what their ideas are and whether those are being reflected in this process at all? Gosh, it's a big question. I mean, I, I would say that um, the jury's out on, on, on us. Um, trust and confidence takes time to nurture and I think that we're such a young, a, a now young company, which is Auckland Council, I don't think everyone trusts us quite yet. Um, we're working together with our colleagues in transport like never before. We're working with a private sector like never before. Things that I've never experienced in the last five years are happening like never before. So um, we've seen a bit of time, we needed to get the plan in together and we need the people behind us. So we are trying and I think the public are excited. I, I, hope, they, I hope they are. I, I can take a straw poll. Um, <laughs> hands up anybody in the room who has read the paper Auckland Unleashed or even downloaded it? A handful? Yeah, no, it's good. Sorry, I should have raised my own hand. <laughs> Um, and w w what did you think of the paper, of Auckland Unleashed? A any? It was a very ambitious time frame to get it done. I don't think years, uh, one year is enough to produce a substantial document. Yeah. It's meant to be iterative, mm. so what comes out on August 25th, finished by the end of the year, is only the first mm. version, um, and it will improve over time. So don't be too worried about that. But what did you feel about the content itself and the sort of issues that were raised, um, the thought of, sort of opportunities and choices were outlined in, in the document? 